In this video, I'm gonna talk about whether an MRI increases the value of your personal injury case. Stay tuned and watch the entire video because I'm gonna show you some real settlements and how an MRI increased the value of those cases. I'm injury attorney Justin Ziegler. An MRI increases, generally speaking, the full value of the case. That is before any reductions. Why does it increase the full value? It increases it because it increases your out-of-pocket medical bills. The jury also would get to hear the out-of-pocket medical bills. So if you have an MRI, your medical bills are higher. The jury gets to hear a higher number. And the general rule of thumb is the higher the medical bills the jury gets to hear, hear the higher the award for pain and suffering. But keep in mind, just because it increases the full value of the case, when you have a case, you still need to look at things that discount the value of the case. And for when I speak about cases, I'm talking about cases where someone else's carelessness caused your injury. So there's many times that you could get an MRI and it won't increase the settlement value of your case. For example, if there's no insurance available and the defendant, the person who caused your accident, has no money. If uh, there's very little damage to the vehicle you're driving, expect the insurance company to put up a harder fight, even if you have a positive finding on your MRI, something that's wrong. Expect the insurance company to argue that even if you have a tear, for example, the MRI shows a tear, that because there's zero damage to your car and zero damage to the other vehicle, expect Geico State Farm or one of the other insurance companies to say that the tear was not caused by the accident. But the point is that all things equal, meaning if you got 10 cases, from one part of town and 10 cases from another part of town, the 10 cases where someone else is at fault uh, and you have an MRI are generally speaking going to have a higher settlement value than the 10 cases where someone does not have an MRI. Now, if you're in an auto accident in Florida, PIP should pay for your MRI. They're gonna pay the medical provider who administered the MRI directly. If you were, in, if you initially treated for your accident, which within 14 days and a doctor diagnosed you with an emergency medical condition. Now, if you're injured on someone's property, let's say a condominium complex or a supermarket, their insurance may pay for your MRI and they would be paying you, generally speaking, at the end of the case when it settles if you can show that they're at fault. Now, some properties have what's called med pay insurance and that pays regardless of fault. However, the med pay insurer will not pay in advance for your MRI. Out of representing people at, for now over 12 years, I've never had one case where the med pay insurer, the insurer of the premises, paid in advance for the MRI. So what you'll need to do in that case is use your health insurance. And you can always use your health insurance. For example, if you're in a car accident, your health insurance will be secondary after your PIP in most car accidents. Understand if your health insurance pays for your MRI, they're later on gen if you're able to settle the case against the at-fault party, your health insurance is generally entitled to get repaid for what they pay. But understand, if you can't prove that the property owner where you were injured or someone else that caused your injury did something wrong, they don't have to pay for your MRI. An MRI can help your case the most if it clearly shows a tear uh, it could be a ligament tear, a tendon tear, something of that nature, but it's clear, meaning two different doctors, radiologists would look at it or orthopedic doctors would look at it and they would see that without a doubt there's a tear, for example, full thickness tear, for example. But just because one doctor says that there's a tear, your doctor likely, it doesn't mean that the other doctor is going to see a tear. And also, sometimes an MRI may show a tear, but when the doctor actually operates on you, he doesn't see a tear, and what he sees is fraying, which is just wearing away over time of, let's say, the tendon, for example, as opposed to a tear. And if it, you just have fraying, generally speaking, the case is worth less because the insurance company is gonna make the argument that it was old and existed before the injury, uh, before the accident. However, in Florida, for example, you're entitled to recover if the accident aggravated or worsened your tear uh, and you have an MRI that can show that. Another way that an MRI can greatly help your claim is that after uh, you're in an accident and you quickly have an MRI, if it shows liquid inside your knee or swelling, because then your doctor can say that the swelling is consistent from being in an accident as opposed to going uh, to the hospital on the same day of the accident or the day after and there's no swelling and no liquid inside your knee, you're gonna take, you're gonna have a 
tougher fight from the insurance company arguing that it's not related. Another instance where an MRI can greatly help your case is if you injured your head, a head injury, a brain injury. As you can see here, there's something visible wrong with the brain, and MRIs are crucial in brain injury cases. The times when an MRI is worse for your case or least helps your case is if the radiologist says that the date of the tear, the age of the tear is indeterminate, meaning the radiologist cannot determine how long that tear has been there for. Also, if there's, again, I already discussed it, but low property damage uh, to the vehicle, expect a tougher fight from the insurance company. But generally speaking, if, for example, there's a very low policy, like $10,000 available, if that's all that's available, and you have surgery to your knee, an MRI reveals a tear. I've had a case where uh, the insurer Allstate paid the $10,000 because the value of my case, if a jury did believe that the tear was related and the surgery was related, would have been up here, $50,000 or more, and the $10,000 policy limits, they just wanted to pay and not expose their insurer to having to pay more if they lost the trial. I also had a case where I settled for uh, $35,000, unfortunately, due to limited insurance, where the radiologist in the MRI actually said the shoulder tear, my client's rotator cuff tear, was not related, meaning not acute, meaning not immediate after the accident. But he had shoulder surgery, and again, you, if you have an aggravation, a worsening of a tear in Florida, you're entitled to recover for the degree of worsening. That case, a motorcycle rider was just riding straight, another car pulled out and hit him, and we settled that case. If you don't have insurance, any source of insurance, you're going to want to hire an attorney if you want to get an MRI who will agree to what's called a letter of protection, where the doctor agrees to withhold to not get payment until you settle your case. Um, also, if you get an MRI, you're going to immediately going to want to request the medical bills and records from the MRI provider, even if there's nothing wrong, even if the MRI doesn't show anything wrong, because the at-fault party is responsible to pay these out-of-pocket medical bills. You're also going to want to, every time if there's something wrong, request the CD or films from the MRI facility. If there's something wrong that the MRI revealed, such as a tear, etc., immediately send those to all insurance companies who may have to pay you. Do not assume because the insurance company has not asked you for that CD or film that they're not going to later ask you for it. Also, don't assume that if they're not asking you for it, that they're going to give you full value. You need to give them every piece of information so they can properly document their file, get as much money as possible, authority for as much money as possible to settle your case, and hopefully it results in the biggest settlement possible for you. This is the truck that rear-ended my client, who was also driving an 18-wheeler, and the MRI showed a tear for his case, but it turned out where his treating doctor who was a workers compensation doc who was paid by workers compensation insurance they're normally very conservative meaning their goal is to get you back to work and they generally minimize the extent of your injury uh, even though the MRI showed a tear when the doctor went in and I spoke with him after he said that my client just had fraying meaning it was old and that my client should have just needed a, a, a few days or weeks of treatment and he should have been fine and his injury wasn't related to uh, the accident. Nevertheless, we settled in total for $210,000, but my client did have shoulder surgery in there. He also claimed a herniated disc was caused by the accident. This is a gentleman who's on the floor, as you can see, at the supermarket. This picture was taken immediately after his fall by supermarket employees, but he had a pre-existing Achilles tendon tear to his leg that's in the lower leg, and um, he had an MRI of his hamstring of his leg later on, and it showed some uh, liquid in his knee, and it also showed a tear of the hamstring. Now, even though the hamstring wasn't the primary uh, complaint that he had, having an MRI still helped him get closer and achieve that $300,000 settlement. You should not be afraid of getting an MRI. There's been no harmful effects that any studies have shown that MRIs can harm you. However, obviously, always consult with your doctor, and he should be the final word. Understand that insurance companies, generally speaking, use the, the same doctors over and over to read their MRIs. You can imagine that their testimony is generally most favorable to the insurance company, not you, even if it's your own, for example, uninsured motorist insurer. Expect the insurance company to be hiring uh, doctors where if your, your tear or whatever you have herniated disc is in the gray area, expect those doctors to 
lean towards the area that says you're not injured or the injury is not permanent or it wasn't caused by the accident, hopefully your doctors within that gray area will testify, testify favor, favorably to you. Now, if the insurance company continuously uses the same doctor over and over, the jury gets to hear that and that makes the case their argument that um, you're not badly injured or the injury wasn't caused by the accident, that makes their argument tougher. Please watch our other videos. I'm attorney Justin Ziegler of Jay-Z Helps of Florida Injury Law Firm, serving Florida. 